the development of our recipe book had an easy start. We have just created the views for it. Now that we have them, let's do something. More specifically, let's connect them to our application so that we can navigate between different views. Navigator is an entity that, well, manages navigation between different views. It's not a component. There's no UI for the navigator. It works behind the scenes. Instead, the navigator determines which registered view should be shown in the designated area, based on the URL of the page we are accessing. Navigator can also be used to navigate to a page programmatically. It requires two things to work. An area to display current view and registering the views themselves. The area to display views is typically a layout into which the functional part of our system, the view itself, is added. First, we decide which area will be used for displaying views. In our soon-to-be-famous recipe book, we would like to have the topmost part of the screen stay unchanged, regardless of the view we are in. We will put some important components there, like login form or information about current user, application logo, and the like. Let's prepare that first and leave a placeholder for our views to populate. Once we have it ready, we need to register views with the navigator. There are different ways of doing that. The straightforward one is to register an instance of a view with the navigator. The biggest disadvantage here is that we have created an object without being sure we are ever going to use it. In other words, we would be wasting resources if the view was huge. Instead, we can register a class of that view. It would be instantiated when we navigate to that view for the first time. This is memory efficient, but at the price of speed, if the construction of a view takes a significant amount of time, the process of creating the view will be unnecessarily delayed. Finally, we can register a view factory. This allows us to dynamically create views depending on what the URL of our application is. Naturally, this is the most flexible and most advanced solution. Our simple application does not need such a sophisticated approach. The more advanced ways of using Navigator are covered in the book of Vadin. For now, let's register views by their classes instead. Before we try it in practice, let's add some buttons to switch between the views so that we do not have to retype URLs all the time. Let's create one button per view and navigate to that view when the button is clicked. We will register search view also with an empty name. We want it to be available by default when someone enters our application. We will provide a default view or a starting page later on. Ok, there, let's try it out. You can see that the buttons work and that the URL is changed. We can also type URL directly and a proper view will be shown. Most importantly, basing our application on views and navigator adds support for back and forward buttons in the browser, like this. Lastly, we can now easily bookmark the page to come back to it later. All that with just a few simple lines of code, creating the navigator and registering the views. Of course, we should keep in mind the fact that the state of an application may depend on more factors than just the URL address. This is especially true with Vadin. Navigator does even more. It supports passing parameters through the URL address. We will get back to that later when we connect some data to our application. Now that we have a navigation support, we can show some views. Well, it's time for us to do a bit more work on the contents of those views. Let's move on.